Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pass and Money Plan. I'm Kirby. That's Alex over there. Today, we're going to continue the last part of our series about this topic we got here from the Wealth Coach uh, from Twitter. Today's topic is, I mean, what we're talking about, things that we wish we'd have known when we was in our 20s or early 20s. Uh, and this topic here is to buy more houses. Um, I have a couple things to say about this, but I'll let Alex take the show first because, you know, Alex is starting out in the rental game. So, Alex, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think maybe he should have been a little bit more specific, um, but uh, I think he's referring to properties like cash flow properties. Um, but, yeah, um, I think I wish I would have maybe started earlier, um, like as far as. It was great to like say learn stocks and stuff, but I think I could have, I mean, why not? Why couldn't I have you know maybe started in real estate, um, you know, at the time, and I would have gotten better deals, especially since uh you know the market in Florida and such has gone up, um, but even um, say like, I even say like the the first house I bought, you know, just a house to live in, um. I made that decision at 21, but I was prepared and ready. I was ready for it at 19. So I, you know, I could have just went ahead and done it at 19 rather than wait till 21, which still would have been a better decision, you know, than waiting in the sense of um, real estate would have been cheaper two years prior and such. But, um, but yeah, that that's my view. Um, but yeah, buy more houses. I always get asked, you know, how many properties I want. And I just say as many until I die. <laughs> I don't have a number, you know, just as many as I can get. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you there. I mean, we the fat the fastest way. So the fastest way to get to to wealth, I mean, from zero to a million dollars. I mean, you know, we talked about this is house hacking. I mean, could I mean if you knew more about the real estate game because you your first property been a multifamily property, you lived in one, rented out the other ones, yeah. But you didn't know what you didn't know. And you went a, you went another route because you just didn't know. I mean, that that happens. That truly happens. Uh, but now you know, and then now you're starting to add that uh, that stream of income into your life through real estate. I mean, you start off with the stock market. I mean, I believe when we started talking, you was already in the process of the whole house buying process with the new house. So you didn't know what you didn't know. That's fine, Danny. Can't change that, can't repeat it. And I know people probably looking now like, you you bought a house when you, you built a house when you was 21. What the hell? I'm 50 and I ain't even built a house yet. <laughs> so, so yeah, so people ain't gonna cry your river for that one. But um, but just rental property, <laughs> rental properties in general. The thing that I that I always try to tell people, because you always hear that person, you say you, you know, you have a couple rental properties or you have rental properties, and it's like, oh yeah, I want to buy a duplex. Or I want to buy a rental property. I always tell people, if your goal, one rental property is not going to do you anything. One rental property is going to be a headache more than a benefit from to you. And then, of course, you're going to have this, you know, the people that's out here. Oh, well, if you hold it for a long time, then the equity grows and all that. If you really do the math, if you really do the math on there, it's going to be a long term headache. And if you don't know how to operate, if you don't know how to uh, and Usually, if you only have one rental property, you don't know how to operate. So I'm not saying this just guesstimating on people. You you got you don't know how to operate. You're gonna be dealing with tenants' calls. You're gonna be spending gargantuan amounts of money. Gargantuan, that's a new word right there. You got a lot of money on uh on repairs and fixing stuff over and over and over again. And then when you you know you do the plus minus on it, all the money you spent on repairs and all the money you spent on investing in a property. Net, net, it probably is going to end out to zero or you're going to lose the property. I mean, hopefully you don't lose the property, but you it's going to be a loss if you net net out the numbers going across, you know, a number of years. Some people lose the property because they're bad operators. They lose the property because they have feelings and they get emotional because they know the tenant personally. And then they, you know, they're not raising the rent and things like that. So one rental property is not going to be enough. I'll just tell you for myself, my first rental property I paid for in cash. Uh, after HOA fees and the uh, CDD high high taxes, I was only cash flowing about three four hundred bucks a month. 
three, four hundred bucks a month is not going to do anything. Really, I mean, maybe if this was three, four hundred bucks in, you know, one of the southern states like Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, maybe it'll do something. But in somewhere like Florida, where it's growing and the costs are going up three, four hundred bucks. Well, what you have to deal with being a landlord, especially managing yourself, is not worth it. The second thing that I always want to tell people is if your goal is not to get 10 units, at least 10 units, then don't get one. Because again, we already talked about how one unit is not enough, it's going to be a headache. But if the goal is 10 units, so let's say I get three, I was getting $300 in cash flow. And let's just say every unit I bought, it was $300 in cash flow. So 10 units, that's $3,000 a month in cash flow. $3,000 a month will at least pay for some rent, utilities, and stuff like that. And then growing it over time, growing it over time, and then raising rents and things like that. And then eventually exiting out of them years later. We talking like a million dollars, million plus in um, you know net value that I'll get from these units. Plus, I'm getting three thousand dollars a uh, a month in cash flow that can pay for other things in my life. So again, if you not if you if your goal is not to get at least ten units, I would not ever start on one. And the last one is people always think that oh, because I you know I tell somebody how many properties I have or how many units, and they always say. How do you manage? How do you manage it? And it's all about being an operator. Being an operator is important. And what I mean by being an operator is knowing how the process goes. Me personally, I don't deal with tenants on an everyday basis. I deal with tenants on a never worry basis. So I don't deal with tenants at all. What I do is I hire property managers to manage the tenants. The property managers deal with the tenants' phone calls. The property managers deal with raising the rent and deal with all problems and everything that goes along with the tenants. I only get calls from the property manager if it's something that they can't handle or if they have a question about capital allocation. That's it. So I might like get a one phone call and I have properties all over. I might get one phone or two phone calls a month about a certain property on how a property manager want to hand, handle it, but I don't have to deal with the everyday day-to-day -day calls with tenants and things like that. So it's not, it's actually less headaches the more properties I get because now I have the cash flow, the money, and give me the ability to hire a team around me to deal with all that stuff. And the only thing I have to do is sit here and collect paychecks. So that's, that's what I would tell anybody in there you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and they thinking about getting into the real estate game is, yes, get more units. I'm not sitting here, Grant Cardone and saying, oh, you should buy 30 unit property builders or higher or 500 unit property builders or higher. I'm just saying, start at one, one rental at a time, one, 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 and then you want to grow your portfolio to at least 10. I will not stop at one. I mean, maybe if you're in, you know, a high density, high populated area, like a, a Tampa or Miami, five is good. But for everybody else in the, in the real world, 10 is your number you shoot for as far as unit-wise if you want to get in the real estate game. All right, guys. With all that being said, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.